This video will showcase some measurement experience of functional parameters on small power transformers. These uh, are static electrical devices designed to convert voltages and currents at the low power levels, typically ranging from a few volt amperes to several kilovolt amperes. They are widely used in applications where voltage modification or circuit isolation is necessary. They provide electrical isolation between the primary and secondary circuits, enhancing safety and reducing the risk of short circuits. It is important to note that the power circuit is considered as such when the current exceeds 5 amperes. Our transformer model is a very heavy unit that handles a significant amount of power. It is quite difficult to lift, although this may not be noticeable in the images. The first test performed is to determine its mass using a simple scale. After carefully placing it on the surface, we read its mass, which amounts to nearly 5.3 kilograms. Next, we measure its physical dimensions with a ruler. It is a truly powerful device, as confirmed by its dimensions, 12 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 6 centimeters. It is indeed very heavy. Measuring the electrical resistance of a transformer's windings is a useful technique to identify the primary and secondary windings and distinguish high voltage windings from low voltage ones. A multimeter set to the resistance measurement scale, ohms, is required. Typically, the resistance of the primary winding in a transformer designed to operate at 230 volts AC ranges from tens to hundreds of ohms, depending on the transformer's power. The secondary winding, on the other hand, has a resistance of just a few ohms. Using an ohmmeter, we measure the primary winding, usually made of thinner wires, and find its impedance to be about 6 ohms. The secondary winding, characterized by thicker wires, has a much lower impedance, less than 1 ohm, which is difficult to measure with a regular multimeter. It is much better to use a precision bridge milliometer, which eliminates errors caused by measurement cables. Now, the measurements are much more precise and reliable, as can also be seen in the final report. Now, we perform a very interesting measurement that cannot be done with the standard multimeter, but requires an inductance meter. The goal is to measure the inductance of both the primary and secondary windings. The procedure is very simple and is carried out similarly to using a standard tester. The final report shows uh, the inductances of both coils, with the primary winding having a much higher inductance due to the greater number of wire turns. It is now time to measure the input and output voltages to determine the transformer's uh, turns ratio. The input voltage is measured with the multimeter set to AC mode, as it could be dangerous for an oscilloscope, even though its probes have a 10x division. Always remember to isolate electrical connections to prevent accidental contact with the human body. So, safety comes first. The multimeter indicates an input voltage of approximately 230 volts ACRMS value. The secondary voltage is lower because in this case uh, the transformer steps down the voltage. It has uh, a sinusoidal waveform and measures approximately 23 volts uh, peak to zero equivalent to 16.3 volts RMS. The output voltage is not an indicator of the transformer's power capacity. It is now interesting to observe how connecting a power load to the transformer's output causes a natural voltage drop due to the transformer's internal resistance. Calculating this voltage drop is very useful in determining the transformer's rated power. 
to ensure proper operation of the transformer without excessive stress. The voltage drop with the connected load should not exceed 15% of the no load voltage. As seen in the images, connecting a 4.7 ohm 100 watt resistive load results in a secondary voltage drop of only a few tenths of a volt. The waveform remains almost unchanged, a clear indication that the transformer is very powerful. Now, we calculate the transformer's internal resistance by measuring the voltage drops across different resistive loads. The measurements are taken by recording the value of the connected load, the transformer's no load voltage, and the voltage under load. The formula for calculating the internal resistance of the transformer involves dividing the difference between the two voltages by the current flowing through the circuit. We have connected the various power resistors of different values to the transformer's output. The test lasted only a few seconds as the component heating was excessive. The data table highlights that the transformer's internal resistance is approximately 100 milliohms. Therefore, if we connect a 100 milliohm resistive load, the secondary output voltage would be halved, which is an unacceptable condition for the proper functioning of the transformer. This is the most important graph and it is uh, worth spending a few extra words on it. From the previous measurements, a curve fitting process can be performed to derive a suitable formula for calculating the transformer's power and the maximum current it can supply without damage. As mentioned earlier, for proper operation, the voltage drop with the connected load should not exceed 15% of the no load voltage. For example, for a no load voltage of 18.5 volts, it should not drop below 15.725 volts to prevent excessive stress on the transformer. Let's examine the three graphs. The top graph displays the voltage readings. The x-axis in logarithmic format represents the load impedance in ohms. The first curve represents the voltage drop. The second curve represents the open loop voltage. The third curve represents the voltage as a function of the load. The fourth curve indicates uh, the voltage level below, which application is not recommended. The middle graph shows the current curve as a function of the load. The bottom graph displays the power dissipation curve of the transformer also as a function of the load. This region is therefore considered unsafe as it could lead to transformer overheating. This occurs when the load is less than 0.5 ohms Conversely, the safe operating region is indicated. The maximum current that the transformer can safely deliver is approximately 30 amperes, corresponding to a power output of 480 watts.